In this video, I'm going to be testing all the execution strategies for trading Bitcoin on the cryptocurrency exchange FTX. I've loaded up five different sub accounts with $1,000 each, and I'm going to be writing a trading bot to execute different strategies to see which is the most cost effective way to get in and out of a delta neutral position. Okay, so first let me show you what I'm trying to do here. This is the Bitcoin US dollar market on FTX, and you can see this is trading just over $36,000. If we go into the futures market for the December futures, we see it's trading quite a bit higher, almost $39,000. There's a 6% premium on the futures market. At the time of the Coinbase listing, this premium was over 20%. And what that means is you could effectively buy Bitcoin on spot markets and then short sell the futures contract to collect that premium at the end date. You're effectively locking in a yield or return for the rest of the year. Now, if when the markets get a bit toppy and frothy again, it's going to be something that I want to look at and I want to be in a position where I can execute large orders as cost effectively as possible. So what I'm going to do in this test is work out the most cost effective way to get in and out of a thousand dollar position, buying the spot market and selling this futures contract. So these are the five strategies that I want to test. And to understand these, you're going to need a basic understanding of the order book and how limit and market orders work, which you can find in this video here. So S1 is market orders, and I'm going to fire off two market orders, one for the spot market and one for the futures market in parallel together so the positions always hedge. I'm going to be paying higher fees for this compared to limit orders because I'm taking liquidity from the order book. There's also going to be some slippage, so I don't expect this to perform well, but it's there as a baseline test. The next strategy is to place a limit order on the futures market, which is in this case is the less liquid market. And then once that's executed, automatically place a market order on the spot market. I'd expect this to perform better because I'm paying less fees and less slippage on the initial trade on the futures market. However, it's likely that the order is going to get filled when the price is moving against us. So we could see some market movement there interfering in the time difference between when the futures market executes and when the spot market executes. S3 is balance limit orders. I'm going to bid and hold the leading bid ask price on both exchanges until someone takes that liquidity. I'm using a WebSocket to get live price updates and then move my order in line with what the current pricing is. This way I'm basically getting in queue to get filled on both markets as quickly as possible. S4 is market maker orders. Now this isn't really market making, but what I'm doing is I'm increasing the spread between the leading ask and the leading bid price so that I'm bidding just outside of that and waiting for the orders to get filled. And finally, S5 is the cross market moving average. In this strategy, I'm taking the average of the difference between the spot market and the futures market over a low time frame. And then I'm seeing if the price is currently trading above or below that and executing when it's most optimal. Okay, let's get to building this thing. All the code is open sourced, but bear in mind this isn't production ready. It's not been tested and it's not really good enough to be used for financial transactions. It's designed and being used for experimental purposes for testing only. Okay, so let's fire this up and see how we get on. Any guesses about which strategy will work best? So we can see the limit orders coming in now. As each batch executes, that'll be added to our balances below. This is gonna take a little while to execute, so let's come back to it once we've got the first set of results. Okay, so that's finished executing now, and you can see that we've built up this position of 0.02 Bitcoin. We've purchased 0.02 Bitcoin on the spot markets. And if we go into the futures market, We've short sold 0.02, the same amount of the December futures contract. After the initial test, all the account values are actually above the starting amount, and that's just caused by the spread between the futures and the spot markets and variations between that. It's not the order execution itself. I'm now gonna swap the parameters around, so we're selling the spot account and buying back the future to close the position. I'm gonna do this three times to get some final results. Okay, I have the final results in now, and these are the account values. So S1 market orders finished with an account value of 993.23. So it's cost just under $7 to execute their market orders. The limit futures market spot actually saved some money. It finished at 997.65. The balance limit orders worked really well. That finished with an account balance of $999.24. Average batch time is 26 seconds, so you're not actually losing much time in respect to executing a market order for the second market because you're always waiting for that futures market to execute first because it's the lower liquidity market. Then we have S4, the market maker strategy. Didn't do as well as I was expecting. That finished with 998.8. .8. Average batch time, 169 seconds. It's a lot longer and there's no benefit to just holding that leading bid ask price. So for me, I'd say that, that wasn't something that I'd pursue further for this particular strategy. 
Then finally, we have the cross-chain moving average, which finished uh, actually over the initial count balance, finished at $1,000.30 with an average batch time of 47 seconds. It's taken quite a while to execute, but the effectiveness of that strategy is really quite prevalent. By using a load time frame moving average and then using balance limit orders to execute, it really gives us a good strategy for getting in and out of this delta neutral position. So the thing I'd like to end on is that there's an opportunity to take this further. You can use moving averages across multiple markets, even multiple exchanges to look for fair value and opportunities to gain exposure to digital assets in the most price efficient way. I hope you've enjoyed this experiment. There's more details in the blog post linked to in the description and the source code is on GitHub, which is also linked to in the description. Hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe for updates. Thank you for watching.